Hey guys, what's up? Pizza Living Note here. Today we're going to be looking at Solus 4.1, Budgie Edition. Now this is a flagship edition, because uh, they made the Budgie desktop. Um, and there's also a new Plasma Edition. Now I'm not going to look at Gnome and Mate, because there aren't that many changes, but uh, I am going to be looking at the Budgie Edition. And yeah, so let's get into the video. So we're looking at Solus Budgie 4.1, and this is the Budgie desktop. And we're just going to go over some of its features and some things I like about Solus, and yeah. Now, Solus Budgie is a desktop I recommend a lot of the time to Linux outsiders, because you never need to use the command line. Let's first look at its software center. Now this didn't get many changes, but uh, this is one of the reasons to use Solus. So, um, there's quite a few different categories right here, so um, if I wanted to get Office Software, for example, I can click on Office Software, and then Office Software, we have note-taking software. There's just It's just really easy to navigate, and uh, it actually works properly. A lot of software centers tend to not work properly for some reason, uh, like GNOME software is notorious for not working properly, and yeah, so... Uh, Solus, instead of just settling with GNOME software, they made their own software center from scratch, and it is really nice looking, and it works really well. It also has a feature called third party, where some of the more proprietary apps you can get from third party sources, usually from uh, the developer's own source. So you can get Adobe Flash Player for Firefox and Vivaldi. You have Google Chrome right here. We have PyCharm, uh, Ultimate and Community Edition. We have Spotify. This just makes installing some third-party apps super easy. So this is kind of like a mini version of the AUR for Solus that is uh, maintained by the Solus team. Um, I do hope that eventually we will be able to get more stuff in here because even with third-party, there's still only about, I'd say, 25, I'm just guessing, 25, 30 apps in here, so yeah. Now, one issue with Solus is its repository is a little bit small, so if we go... Uh, we search Chromium, for example, isn't on here, uh, so you'd have to use regular Google Chrome instead. And uh, there's a lot of reasons to use Chromium over Google Chrome. I'm not going to get into them right now, but that is something to note. That uh, since this is a pretty new distro, I will I will criticize them on their repos a lot because um, it's a really small repo, and and if you head over to their package requests. They reject a lot of applications because there's either an alternative that already exists or it hasn't been up to date a lot or whatever. But then they also still uh, have older packages that haven't been updated in a while in their repos. So uh, they are a little bit hypocritical with their repositories. I feel like that. Uh, I feel like they just don't want to maintain more packages because just because they don't want to even though they should because of how small this repository is. The Chromium thing, they do say that they just need, like, I think GPG keys or something. I can't remember specifically, but they need, like, a signing key or something, and they're waiting on that to package Chromium. But they said that with the release of Solus 4, which was nine months ago, and I remember Chromium wasn't in Solus 3. So having a distro that has had four releases without Chromium, which is kind of an essential package for most people, is a little bit of a bummer. Now let's go through the Budgie desktop. Now this has sort of a Windows 7 like layout where we have a Windows 7 like start menu here. We have uh, a taskbar right here. And if you go to the bottom right, we have the Raven menu. Now I love the Raven menu. You have a bunch of applets right here and you can get information like your time and date. You can p use it for managing media devices like your music. You can use it to switch input devices. The Raven menu is really good, and it's one of the reasons you'd want to uh, use Budgie. You can also get your notifications here. So it's kind of like Control, it's not Control Center, kind of like that sidebar on Windows with all your notifications and uh, that side thing on Mac with all your notifications. I really like this. Another thing is a lot of people do not like GNOME Shell, but they uh, really like its ecosystem where all of its applications have a very similar design. And it's really easy to pick up each GNOME application. Once you know how to use one GNOME application, you know how to use all of them. Now, Budgie doesn't have desktop icons by default. It's really easy to enable them. You just head over to Budgie Desktop Settings, head over to Desktop, 
and uh, just check desktop icons, and now you have your desktop icons. However, it's really strange to me that they are not enabled by default, because Solus holds back Nautilus. It's using Nautilus 3.26 right here, just to get desktop icons working. And if you're going to use an older version of a file manager just to get desktop icons working, you should also at least enable desktop icons by default, in my opinion, because if you're going through all the trouble to get them working, but then they're not enabled by default, what's the point? It also is a pretty minimal selection of applications. So accessories, we just have these four things, text editor, file manager, calculator. Graphics, we just have photos, document viewer, and LibreOffice draw. Internet, we just have web browser, email client, and hex chat. Office, we have LibreOffice and GNOME Calendar. Sound, we just have a media player and music player. It's a really minimal system, and a lot of people might like that, but uh, you will have to install a lot of things after you install Solus. Now, I think that Solus, even with its shortcomings, is a distro for the masses. This is the distro I recommend to people whenever they're switching to Linux. It has a very similar layout to Windows 7, so people will be at home with that. Its software center is one of the few software centers that actually works properly. Uh, it's a rolling release, but it's super stable. It's probably a better rolling release than Windows, which is sad that a small group of open source developers can make a better release, rolling release than an entire company. And because of that, people won't need to upgrade their system every once in a while because of uh, a new release. And it tends to honestly not care about some of the more niche open source applications like Chromium because an average user, someone in the masses, would go over the third party and then install Chrome instead of Chromium. Someone in the masses won't know what Chromium is, just as an example. It's also really easy to get drivers with your hardware driver manager. So because of that, this is the best distro for the masses. My friend had this really bad computer that could run Minecraft at like 5 frames per second. I put Solus on this for him, and he's been super happy with it ever since. So, uh, I'm actually going to be titling this video, uh, Solus for the Masses, or, or Solus the Distro for the Masses. This is a really good distro for someone who doesn't care about Linux or anything. This is a good distro for someone who just needs something that works, just needs a Windows 7 alternative because uh, Windows 7 had its end of life. This is what I'd point them to. So, yeah, if you're new to Linux, check out Solus. It's a OS that just gets out of your way and lets you do work done. <laughs> do you even English, bro? <laughs> do you even English, bro? Anyways, thank you for watching this video. Thank you to patrons, uh, Michelle Vantino and Sam Covet. If you want to become a Patreon patron, there's a link in the description below. Also, feel free to check me out on LBRY. I'm on there too. And uh, if you don't like YouTube, you can check that out. Anyways, bye.